So this video will be on unit testing and instrumentation testing. Uh, this this video is just meant for a basic understanding on the key concepts of how Android development is a little bit different when you're trying to develop an app in the production level. And I just want to show uh, how to create an app using testing, using a testing method, rather than just a conventional like amateur coding. So I just open a new application, file new project, and I just open a new application, my application. So we're going to build a palindrome checker. So palindrome checker means a palindrome is a word that when spelled backwards uh, spells the same forward. So like mom, M-O-M, if you spell it forwards or backwards it's the same. So it's a palindrome. So let's develop an app using testing methods. So let's first go into the layout. And this is my activity main layout. So let's get rid of this text view for now. And so let's add an edit text. Let's see. An edit text. All right. And we're going to add a button. To like when it clicks it's going to check whether the string that we typed in the edit text is a palindrome. So let's make the width match parent. And let's, let's make the button match parent. Okay. And let's make the text check. Check it. And then you never want to hard code your strings. So if you press Alt Enter on a Windows and hit Extract String Resource, you can add the string to your values folder. Values, Strings, XML. So you'll see here that it's automatically added to the Strings file. You never want to hard code strings because when you're translating into different languages, it'll be such a pain to translate each hard coded string into a different language. So you always want to hard code strings into your values strings xml full file. So if we look at the design, yep, there's our edit text and there's a check it. So now we're going to go into testing. So under Android test, let's make a new class file and call it main test or main activity test. So let's first check for instrumentation tests. So instrumentation tests are tests that depend on the UI, whether an edit text is there, or whether the button is in null. So we're, to do that, we're going to extend activity instrumentation test case 2, and we're going to add our main activity class to this right here. And it's going to give you an error because there's no constructor. So press Alt-Enter. And you're going to create constructors matching super. And pick the second one. Okay. So let's see. Uh, let's. We're going to call the super class of main activity. This is where your main activity dot class is specified. And now for testing, you need to set up your testing environment and tear it down when you're done. So we have two methods setup and we're going to have a teardown method so this is just getting ready your test environment so now in order to start the test you're going to use an annotation small test and you're going to call public void and the trick here is you're going to start every test method with the prefix test and we're going to check imagine the edit text is not null so edit text all right, so this is going to check whether our edit text is null. So let's call, let's find it out. Edit text et typecasting it. I'm not going to go through this. This is pretty basic. Uh, do I need? Yeah, get activity dot find new by id r dot id dot edit text right. And you're going to have a method called assert not null. And you want to put et. This just means that making sure that our layout actually contains an edit text value. And the same thing we can do with our button. 
I'm going to just copy that. And instead of edit text, we're going to call it button. Oh, wait. Actually, we're going to make this null, a certain null. And I'll show you why. Button. BT. Button. And we're going to get the button. The button. Okay. I will show you why we're doing a certain null in a second. But first, we're going to run this activity. And to do that, we're going to go up to here and do edit configurations. And we're going to add a configuration called the Android test. The Android test, let's call it tests. And we're going to get all in module. Oh, wait. You have to give the module app because our test is located within this app module. And you want to press OK. And you could actually do this on the terminal, but, but it's kind of annoying. So let's, I'll show you how it does here. I have my Nexus 4 plugged in. So you want to hit play. Uh, where is it? Yeah, right here. Yeah, run. Whoops. Think. I did not want to do that. Oh gosh. Oh wait, here. Just checking the test. Sorry, you don't want to use the emulator. It's going to take forever. Use a USB device. I have my Nexus 4 plugged in. Otherwise, it's going to be running the emulator. And it's going to take forever for a test to run. So, let's run it again. Okay. So, here is our test running. running the test and see it did um, forget there's four tests that's an application test there's two of them forget about them but we have two tests failed tests and when you look here you can see what line number it caused to test what line number it failed so I see line 33 failed a certain on BT and when you go down you'll see main text 26 it also failed you can do this on the terminal too by using Gradle, uh, Gradle W connected, and you want to give your Android test folder, Android test. I think this is how it was. I mean, you could use this, but then it would take. Um, well, actually, I'll show you. See how the line number, the line number was shown in the previous one, but then when you look here. Uh, you can, it doesn't really show you what line number is. You could go onto your, uh, Firefox and type, um, get the stack trace, but it's not really that efficient and it doesn't look very great. So I prefer always to use this. And I'll show you, and the reason why I actually did a certain null is because when you're, developing an application on a product level you want to always make sure you fail the test go back and write some code to actually pass it but since this is an instrumentation test there's not that much code to write we're just going to write assert not null and then it's just going to make sure that okay in our layout we actually have an edit text and we have a button so it's running the tests and yes our tests are successful all green good now we're going to do a unit test. So let's make a new Java class. Let's call it main activity unit test. Right? And then unit tests are tests that actually check the method. So we're going to check a palindrome and see if the palindrome test actually returns true. So we're going to extend test case. Whoops, not test case. And you want to implement the environment setup and teardown. 
And let's make a method, small test, public void checker. This is just going to check if uh, the string percentage is a palindrome. So we're going to give it a condition mom. Wait, actually, that's not there. Sorry. Okay, we're going to get an instance of your main activity. Main activity MA is equal to new main activity. And MA dot, let's make a method called checker and give it the condition mom. Now, see, we haven't implemented this checker method in our main activity. It's not there, so we want to get an error, and that's fine. But let's give it a result. Yeah, a Boolean result. So, in theory, this checker method, when it receives mom, it'll say that it's a palindrome and return true. So we want to make a cert. And remember, in test programming, you always want to make it fail. So asserts equal false uh, result. Actually, for, yeah, that's fine. And now we're gonna since this method isn't implemented, we're gonna implement it here. Public void. Oh, wait, it's a boolean. So boolean checker and string s. And then we're gonna implement a method. Actually, return true. No, return false. So now we have the method, and then since our main activity receives a string mom, it's just going to return false. Always we want to fail the test. Once it fails, go back, write some code, and make it pass. That's how it always is. Always make it fail, go back, write some code, and make it pass. So here we go. We should fail. Did I res return true or false? I return false. Whoops, I think it'll pass. Yeah, it passed. You're supposed to make it true. That way you can... Whoops. Make it fail. Why did that pass? Oh no. And activity run and test extends test case. Alright, you have to give the prefix test. Always remember that. Otherwise, if you don't put that test right here, it's something like Java Reflection. It'll just check whether your method has a test. If it doesn't have a test, it's not going to check it. Others it will. So, see, we failed. And when we look at the line number, we see it's line number 22 because we got a false when mom was presented into this activity. So now we have to make it true. So now start implementing the code for it. So let's uh, make a for if int i, sorry, I got a message. Okay. Int i is equal to 0. Int j equal to s dot length minus 1. This is just an algorithm to prove whether it's a palindrome or not. So I'm not gonna go into that into the explanation that much. I less than s dot length oops divided by two and i plus plus and j minus minus. So we're just gonna check if s dot caret i is equal to s dot care at j we're going to continue the loop what happened now continue outside the loop what happened wait variable i is not what it is wait yeah there we go and if it's equal, I'll keep continuing. And once it ret gets here, it'll return a true value. Else, it'll return, well, actually, we can just here, return false. So if this condition doesn't check, it'll return false. So let's go back to this main activity and run it. So hopefully, if my coding was right, it'll return true.